From here on out, every foul is flagrant, boy. Let's get up. You are now tuned into the chat room, your favorite baller's favorite podcast. All right, welcome back to the chat room podcast. I am the senator, and with me today, we got a small cast of the chat room, but we're still giving you some giving you some quality stuff right now. So we got fanfare. What's going on? We got essay. Yes, sir. Guys, it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame coach isn't here right now because I'm about to go off and he will not be here to defend. <laughs> so uh, gold and team team Raptors in the building. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, Raptor foot. <laughs> on that on that same note, we do want to send a we do want to send a congratulations to coach from Absolutely. and Sate for making it to the nationals. Uh, they went up a they had some close games, some really mm-hmm. close games, some nail biters. Yeah. Almost beat Humber to advance to the finals. Yep. Lost by, I think it was only one point, something like one or two it was, points. It was, like, it was crazy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Went down yeah. to the wire. OT. Absolutely. And it was OT, an man. OT. Yeah. Damn. OT. Um, almost beat Humber at Humber. Mm. Like, Humber was the one who went on to win it. So imagine. Yeah. And then it's going to be, it's only gonna, They're going to go for six. They're going to go for Absolutely. six next season. So, and honestly, once again, RIP number 11, yes. uh, they did the season for good. him and even winning mm-hmm. their fifth ACAC championship was a big, was a big deal. So Absolutely. especially mm-hmm. after what happened. So uh, congrats to everybody. RIP number 11. Um. All right, gentlemen. Yes, sir. There's a lot of stuff that we can get into. I don't want to spend too long on this because honestly, I'm already tired of this topic already. I know what you're gonna. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But there was a slap that was seen and heard across the world. What were y'all thoughts? I, I mean, me personally, Will was wrong for slapping that man the way he did. I don't care, I don't care the situation. You don't slap people. But I understand why he did it. It's not the first time, it's probably not gonna be the last time, but people are always going after Jada for whatever situations they have going on, whatever. I'm what I'm hearing is Chris didn't know. About her ball, uh, about the, um, her, her baldness. That's what I'm hearing. You didn't know. I don't know if that's true. I have no idea. I have a theory, but I'll let you finish. But and and I also I heard another thing that he's not even the one that wrote that joke. Like there's mm. writers that the Oscars have, and they're the ones that put that joke in. So mm. it's not like he came up with the joke and said it. So if that's another, if that's if also that's true. true, that's kind mm-hmm. of. A, a big deal like he was kind of set up in a way like if you think about it like was it a setup but i don't know what will was going through i don't know the pressures he had on them i don't i don't know it was just a perfect storm for something to happen and he snapped it's just that simple he's also not the first time chris rock made a joke about Jay exactly yeah, yeah. And, and i just right? found it out today so, I, 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 I heard he did one in 2016 he did Uh-oh. so the one in 2016 he said um i remember because i when i heard the last joke, I was like, it wasn't even really that funny, right? Like, it wasn't a good Neither joke. was this one. <laughs> no, I'm saying the most recent one. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. The one before, it was um, Jade is when everyone was boycotting the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And Chris Rock said that Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I was never invited. Mm, wow. Um, so first and foremost, uh, I'm reading Will's book, uh, and 
one thing that Will points out is one of the biggest things that's kind of dominated and overshadowed his quite successful career as being one of the black pil pillars of black excellence is um, being a coward in the face of defending somebody he loves. Right now, one thing that nobody I don't see a lot of people talking about, but I kind of notice is the way Chris Rock reacted after he said the joke, but before his taste, the taste was removed from his mouth. When he kind of said like something on the lines like, hey, that wasn't that bad. Come on. It, it wasn't that bad. So from my standpoint, my, I have a theory that this, this being Will's like most recent and probably closest uh, chance at getting the Oscar that he, has eluded him for so long over his crazy successful career, that everything need, for uh, this night needed to be perfect. And we all know that Jade has been suffering from alopecia. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know the depths of how much it is, but she has spoken about it. She's also spoken about just a little bit of a beef between their family and Chris Rock. Uh, that there's uh, there's been tension there before, and it it wasn't just the 2016 uh, comments. And what my theory is is that th maybe there was a conversation beforehand, kind of saying, "All right, these are like some of the things you can't really touch," because they know Chris is going to be on stage. They know they they know what Chris is like on stage, right? And they're going to be front and center being nominated. And I think that a conversation was had to kind of tell Chris, like these things are kind of off, off limits. And instead of just avoiding it completely, I think Chris kind of tried to toe the line. So he did that joke thinking that there's not as bad. It's, 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 it's touching on what you probably told me not to touch, but it's not that bad. And that's because his reaction was, it's not that bad. And then I think that's what kind of caused Will to snap grand audience was the biggest audiences he'll ever have in his life. Our most important audiences, the woman he loves that has been under fire for so long is going through a medical condition. Will has this trauma from his childhood where he didn't get to defend his mom. Here's an opportunity. Not saying I justify it, not saying I agree mm -hmm. with it, but I truly understand what could have led to it. And Chris is not innocent at all. I no. mean, the joke was stupid no. and the joke, the joke was, was that offensive yeah. uh, from I, my standpoint. Again, I don't know what Jada is going through personally, but I it's Will Smith, right? Like, Let's not act like he has a history of this, right? Let's not act like he's the type of guy who has the black TED Talks that we all listen to and we all are quite familiar with. So I think his history should also stand on some kind of merit that, like, obviously it's more than just a stupid joke because this is Will Smith, right? Like, and some of the reactions I'm seeing, uh, like, he could have killed him from Jed Apatow. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's, 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 some people yeah, are yeah, uh, losing yeah. their minds. Yeah, that's a reaction. That's they a want to cancel this punch. man. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing, man. Like we knew we knew what was going to happen when when this came out. Like we knew Max. when once it happened, once the audio came out, once all that stuff happened, you kind of just remixes. knew what was happening. But we also got it. There's a couple of things. I agree with a lot of stuff that both of you guys said. Right. Because there's a lot of things that play factors into this. I also think that adding to your theory essay, I also think after you've dived into a character like King Richard, even mm. though I wasn't that big of a fan of the movie, right? Mm. Um, I still have yet to see it. But to play the role of a father that would do anything to protect his daughters, right? Protect the women in his life, right? Mm. It's, kind of, it's kind of poetic that that is what happens right after right for that film that you're nominated for that's the right. film that you're nominated for right? right um but this is also not the first time that he slapped somebody yeah, uh, yeah. That, so, that was like a love flick <laughs> so so we there's i'm just tired of the i didn't think i was going to be so tired of one thing so quickly yeah yeah, yeah. but man they killed it to death oh. that mm -hmm. night, the day after. Like mm -hmm. when I looked yeah. on first take and they were discussing it on first take. When I looked on Undisputed <laughs> and it was on Undisputed. Every 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 I show. Was, what the why? <laughs> I was I, like, I, I, I it, it's crazy. Mm. I can't. It's crazy. Uh, speaking of poetic, would you also almost call it poetic justice? <laughs> This guy. I'm gonna let that guy, marinate for a this bit. guy. I, 
you know the worst part is I saw it coming and I just decided to say, you know what? I'm just gonna allow him to rock out. <laughs> just, let him, just let him rock. Yeah, yeah. Just let him I have rock. another question for you. You do you yeah. <laughs> of the many, the many uh remixes that's come out, which one are you gonna play on your Friday set to set it? Are you gonna do the reggae mix or are you gonna do the honestly? Sometimes I'll, I'll okay. So here's the thing because I'm playing at restaurants and stuff like that, right? Mm. Most times I just try to play music for everyone to kind of like vibe out while vibe they're too. eating and stuff, yeah. right? Um, but they did do a remix of it was like the video remix of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and when they did like the clap, like yep. the <laughs> thing, you saw the slaps instead, <laughs> like, mm. and um, the men in black one, the men in black one was a good one too. So, like there were the the internet's gonna internet the internet's gonna get creative Mm -hmm. but they also can overkill something so quickly absolutely which is is what they actually did on this one here so i don't ever want to really talk about this i know i'm gonna have to talk (laughs) about this on the not so soft pod but Mm -hmm. like i'm over this so (laughs) i'm I'm with you i'm over it yeah i i've i've been over it's like such a crazy moment it's so surreal and it, it like literally came left as fast as it came. Oh yeah. Honest. But not and as fast as Will's uh right slap. I think honestly the my favorite person that broke it down was Pat McAfee. If you get the chance, go watch go watch that video because he was yeah. talking about like even the stance. He was like, didn't he, <laughs> he was like, didn't he train to be like Ali, Ali and just- then the stance was just a little wrong and just like no, what are you talking about? He had a straight crossbar, man. Like when he went like that. I know he was talking about his footwork though. <laughs> oh, his, his feet, ah, his feet shoot, work, shoot, shoot. right? Shoot. Not just not the hand motion, the feet work. <laughs> but um it's hard in dress shoes. It's hard in dress shoes. Speaking <laughs> of feet work, <laughs> so the Lakers yes. just recently blew a 23-point lead in the game that they said was playoff playoff um worthy this was a playoff type game against the new orleans pelicans uh lebron twisted his ankle in the game still finished the game he's doing what he can can for that team nobody can deny that but they lost they're now sitting in the 10th seed they're currently Mm -hmm. losing by a lot to the dallas mavericks because they're down by 22 23 right now yeah There's no LeBron, no Yo, AD. What's Westbrook saying? What are what are the thoughts on the Lakers at this point? And I don't just want to put it directly just on the Lakers. Let's oh, talk no. about like the Western Conference because we're also seeing the Golden State Golden State Warriors are starting to slide right now without no Steph. Like mm-hmm. Draymond admitted that the team plays worse when he's on the court right now. Like. There's a there's a lot of moving pieces happening. Memphis is killing it right now. Memphis mm-hmm. and Phoenix without Jaw. Without Jaw. Like, what are y'all thoughts on the Lakers, the Western Conference? Let's get into it. Uh it's funny because the beginning of the season was so loud and noisy. And anytime the beginning of the season is super loud and noisy, I'm not even talking, I'm talking about the beginning, see, beginning of preseason training camp is because the Lakers think they have a chance, right? Our top local Laker fan uh, has been very vocal on this podcast. Yes, coincidentally, on the nights when they might slip out of the play-in, he is nowhere to be found. <laughs> um, so, oh, also, we're, are we in fifth place yet, technically? But we're not in the East yet, though. I digress. Uh, so, I think, I, I think what, my question is, and I, will, I, was, I swear I'll go back to the Western yeah. Conference, but when do we have a conversation about the fact that, that two years after the Disney Cup uh, or the Mickey Mouse O'Brien, that the Lakers have not had what but one, but two super trash seasons. When do we call into question that maybe, just maybe, COVID had a major assist in LeBron's fourth ring, right? Because this dynasty that was so loud and boisterous, yelling, oh, we got Westbrook. Oh, we got AD again. Oh, we got Carmelo Anthony. They're all coming reunited again. There's everybody is done. And now y'all even going to touch the play. Um, I think it's very surprising. I'm liking the fact that things are shaking up. I'm liking the fact that there's a changing of the guard because just like with uh, Golden State, the dynasties that were 
uh, seem to be no more and that new dynasties are emerging, right? We have Memphis as a solid contender. Uh, Suns could, could potentially take over the West yet again. Uh, so I'm actually excited to see what uh, this has in store. It looks like uh, COVID kind of shook the NBA box. And now, you know, different people are in different positions. People we thought were going to dominate haven't. People who were sleepers are now contenders. Uh, there's a lot of fakes that are getting exposed. Uh, and, there, you know, there's a lot of uh, David and Goliath stories that are emerging. So I'm quite excited about the West uh, and even the East. The East is not that far behind. I know it's crazy because the, the East top, I think, is still below like the West, like the West top, but still like even the competition over there uh, with, uh, you know, uh, the Bucks might come back for a repeat. Um, I don't know what's going on with the heat right now, but maybe they'll figure it out. I don't know if they need some therapy. Uh, I don't know if they need like some goat yoga, uh, but, you know, hopefully they figure out inside for uh, the playoffs and Boston is coming back. You know, I personally have a vendetta against Boston, uh, but that vendetta was kind of taken care of last night. Uh, but they, yeah, they're also a team to kind of look out for. I kind of went all over the place. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> fair, fair. And no, to, to me, it seems like the Lakers are slowly playing themselves out of the play in. And I have a feeling maybe in the next two games, if the Lakers don't win a game, the next two games, I think they'll pack it in. I, I just don't think they have enough games and to, to, for, for, for to do it, make any noise for the play in. I think they'll just pack it in and say, you know what, guys, it, this season's a wrap. I don't think they'll. I think LeBron just sits out the rest mm-hmm. of through the rest of the year. To be honest, I think it just sits out, right. and I think so does. Uh, um, they probably just play Carmelo and the rest of the guys. But I think LeBron. I think that'll be it for him. No point in playing on a bum, a uh, sore knee. No point in playing on that twisted ankle. There's just no point. sore knee. So mm-hmm. I think the Lakers are pretty much done, in my opinion. And the team to look out for in the West is is Memphis to me. Yep. Memphis, um, Bain, and Brooks, those two, Milton off the bench. I mean, he had a good game the other night. He had 21 points off the yeah. bench. That team is really, really cohesive. Yep. Even without – I think John Morant, I think what he's shown throughout the season is just that energy. Those guys really feed off of his energy. He is one of those guys that just knows how to control the game, mm-hmm. and those young boys are just following his lead. Facts. I'm he's sure a, he's he, a young vet right now. I, yeah, that, that's vet. exactly what it is. I'm like sure Luka. he talk, I'm, I'm sure he. I'm sure the way he talks to them, like a lot of those guys are probably older than Jaw, but the way he talks to them is look at him like we respect this guy, we respect this kid, and yeah. it's it's infectious from the looks of it. That team is open right now. I like I like the team. I also think that the Stephen Adams pickup was a big pickup for them. It was huge. It was huge because he might not. He might not. He gives you kind of what that Draymond gives you on Golden State, where it's mm-hmm. you don't see that you won't actually see the impact until you watch the games. Yeah. Right. And or they're not there. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's him and Ja. I think once they got together they were able to have those conversations with the rest of the team and yep. really Come get together. them to believe themselves in themselves. Yep. Right. I think it's yeah. even by leading by example, because jaw doesn't care who your franchise player is. Jaw doesn't care who the superstar is like jaw. will. I remember, was it in his first season? He was like trying to dunk mm-hmm. on like everybody, like, everybody, everybody like, he did not <laughs> care. So he's the type that will charge into the fray without hesitation and i think that's also great leadership because it's like all right well if we're being led by this guy who 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 will just go in no matter who it is then obviously we got to support him right Mm -hmm. um so yeah memphis is definitely the the sleeper that's kind of Mm -hmm. emerging now yeah and and in the east i think it's obviously uh, i think the team that's been kind of struggling the most is chicago chicago was at one point looking like they'd be the ones to come out of the east and Boston surged, mm-hmm. Miami surged. It's it's interesting. We, we played but like like coach um, coach, like Senator said, or I say said, we played Boston last night. Mm-hmm. Boston dropped from first seed 
they dropped all the way to the four seed with just one loss. That's how tight, That's how tight that race is. is. Mm-hmm. It's insane in the East right now. And I love it. It's been a long time since it's been like this, where it's like one, two, three games separating you basically from second to, to sixth. Yep. The Raptors, if the Raptors can put like right now, we're on a, what, a three game winning streak. Yeah. If the Raptors can put together another, if the Raptors can basically win, I would let's say the next seven of not of, of, the, the, of the next nine games, the Raptors could end up being in that two to fifth spot. Now that changes we're talking. everything. Now That's, we're talking because nobody was looking at the Raptors. Nobody's been watching um, us. I, well, okay, um, us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I did predict oh. we'd be in sixth. Um, you know, might need to take a parlay because it looks like we're gonna be, like you said, in that I mean, two to fifth race. Yeah. They they had us they had us going into the season. They had us about twelfth or eleventh finishing yep. the season. Yep. But they had us going to, to the lottery. The they had us going to, and nobody yep. thought. I think Nick Nick what Nick Nurse is doing. He's really smart. He's been playing with a lot of the lineups. He's he's been playing a lot of the bigs together. Like he'll have Van Vliet, but then he'll play like Ochua, um, Siakam. Mm-hmm. On, on the newbie, like he he's just mixing around with all the matchups. Trent might have get, step yeah, up. Gary Trent he just comes in. He kind of just plays around with it. And then obviously Scotty Barnes. You got yes. Scotty Barnes basically a point forward. He has my point forward. And the way Scotty's been like like I don't think I didn't think Scotty would be as good a passer as I'm seeing he is. Scotty is hmm. he's just he he he's so Magic Johnson esque. Like yeah. you see flashes of it. That's what he kind of reminds me of that Magic Johnson player. Like he can do everything, and I think a lot of of, of teams now we've put on notice. Like the season's almost over, and we're right there, guys. We're we're right there. You you can't you can't we can't hide from the Raptors anymore. You got to talk just, about us. I'm just worried about because I didn't know this until this morning that minutes per game that is Van Vliet and. Siakam mm-hmm. that are leading mm-hmm. the league in minutes yep. per game. The mm-hmm. league, oh shoot! Yeah, right. Yeah. They're one they're and two. Heavy minutes. They're That's going to be tough right? uh, in playoff. Yeah. So that is that is the thing that kind of worries me about it. Mm-hmm. To tell you the truth, just kind of the wear and tear because I know that you want to get to a certain part, like you want that home court advantage if you can. But if you can't, then you also got to think about the health of health yeah. of them. So I think. To be fair, a lot of our our team has been just all over the place with injuries and things yeah. like that. So the most of the season, those guys were playing heavy minutes yeah. because it's next man up mentality for our team. Anytime someone goes down, you're just gonna you're gonna have to loop, and that's just what it is. So I'm just saying that's I, no, heavy. but that's what I'm saying. I'm just worried about the long term effects of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like, I agree. I'm a, I'm totally. I know the reason why it happened. Mm-hmm. It's just I think now that we're in this race right here mm-hmm. that can we sustain it yeah we got to we got to make sure that we're we're really like going a little bit lighter on mm-hmm. the lineups try to build a lead and then mm-hmm. rest players get the get the bench players in mm-hmm. you know i see them trying to get Thaddeus Young more involved like that type of stuff but um i want to go back to the west real quick i mm-hmm. do want to say that i'm still not completely out on golden state at this point i think that it's a huge difference when you have steph on the court than when you have pool running running the point right Mm -hmm. Mm because it opens up the it opens up the floor so if steph does manage to come back for playoffs i'm not ruling them out yeah me neither at this point right now it's not looking that great but if he's back, mm-hmm. it's a huge difference. The space yeah. is different. Draymond can actually do what Draymond does when Steph is on the court. When Steph isn't on the court, everybody can focus on everybody else, right? Clay's still getting his legs underneath him. Like, that's where Steph plays a thing. And honestly, I think this goes for the East. I think we also, when we look at Chicago, it shows you how big of a, how big of a crucial part that – Zoe played. Yep. Mm-hmm. Zoe kind of went down and and he he was really that big driving force. He gets everyone to their spots. Like they were a, a well-oiled machine when he was on that floor. 
Yeah, when you could have and 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 you and now you're minus his three point shooting. You because he was you had you're taking out your point your real point guard at that mm-hmm. point, a good defender. Um, Zach Levine and Caruso and Demar now have to have the ball in their hands a lot more mm-hmm. to be the facilitator, which is what Zoe was. So it is you're starting to see some crucial pieces. pieces. Yeah. When mm-hmm. they go down, like how crucial those pieces are for certain yeah. teams, because, man, it's been crazy. Uh, speaking of a crucial piece, and uh, I'm feeling kind of honest today. Uh, mm-hmm. After watching last night's uh, nail biter OT win, I must say, I think it's about time to retire the Splenda P uh, insult nickname. I think he's proven that. Whatever, whatever <laughs> ghosts and demons that came from since the, the bubble chip that um, he shook them off. Uh, Boston was a big one is because Boston were the ones who knocked us out in the bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was also the game. That series kind of really exposed Siakam uh, and what he lacked. But he definitely has stepped up. He definitely has, uh, you know, kind of went bit, a bit took a bit back from the spin move you know I, I think he's kind of reduced the spin cycle move a bit he still uses it uh but you know he's being it's more, effective yes he's using it when it counts and when it matters mm-hmm. and when it actually works and he's kind of realized that he has to have a few more tricks and mm-hmm. i i kind of now i'm feeling more confident with him having the ball in his hands especially in like key and clutch moments so um i won't sit here and ignore like he is also a big part of the success that we've had uh kind of putting our naysayers to shame uh and i just hope i really hope and pray because i really want to retire splenda p that this translates into postseason right that's what especially with things are opening up now where the the big lights are back on i mean they may set on fire from time to time in scotia bank arena but they still are on uh and i just want to see that how, was crazy that was nuts that uh, was yeah so let's 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 talk about something crazy right now, right? And that is all star. I mean, not all star. MVP race and the rookie of the rookie of the year race, right? Mm-hmm. So top three right now is they have Jokic at one now, and Bead at two, Giannis at three for MVP, and then for rookie of the year they have Evan Mobley. At one, Cade Cunningham at two, Scotty Barnes at three. Who do you guys think is actually going to win it? And who both awards? And yeah, who do you guys think are going to win both awards? I think Booker should win it, but that's just me. You know, um, I don't know because the narrative and the criteria constantly changes. So who knows? Uh, if I was to pick one, I would say Embiid. I think. Uh, did you say Giannis in the top three? I wasn't sure. Giannis is in yeah. the top three. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. I don't know. I think Giannis. I think he's won it a bit few too many. I mean, he's being consistent. You know, his team is still a contender. Uh, but I think again, I think the MVP run is usually based on narrative rather than actual stats and facts sometimes. So, um, I think. Booker should the fact that Booker's not even in the conversation is wild to me. But if I was to pick one, gun to my head, I would say Embiid. Uh, and then when it comes to rookie of the year, well, I'm biased, so I'm just gonna say Barnes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he deserves it. I think he's he's been again another crucial part of our success. Uh, the like this man has had ungodly games like in his rookie year, you know what I'm saying? In in in, in a franchise that a lot of people kind of left for dead. And instead of just using that excuse to slowly build and grow and like, no, he took it seriously. He stepped into the challenge and he's showing that he is definitely going to be, you know, he went, he's an all-star, right? So um, uh, I definitely think Barnes is, should deserve it. Uh, I'm a little biased, but I also think I'm kind of justified in it too. Those are my picks. Will you found her? Um, yeah, for me, I think it's definitely Embiid. I mean, what he's been doing on Philly, it's it's been insane. He's basically averaging 30 and t- almost damn near 12. That's, has, I mean, that's it's just 
Those are tough. Those are big numbers. And Philly, it's been translating the wins. He's put that team in his back on a lot of those games when they've been down, and he's kind of just battled back. Even before, bad. even before Harden, I mean, he was doing that since the beginning of the season. So, I mean, he's been to me, he's been the most consistent guy in the league right now, in terms of what he's been doing, and it's been translating to wins. And Philly's going to be a hard out in the playoffs, I think. So for Embiid for sure, and for Rookie of the Year, I think it's definitely got to be Scotty Barnes. I mean, the Raptors. As of as it stands right now, we have a, a better record than both of those guys. Obviously, yeah. Detroit. Obviously, yeah. Cade Cunningham, Detroit, and Cleveland's kind of fighting, trying to peak, but pass the Raptors. But as it stands, it's got to be Scotty Barnes. I mean, he's 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 getting twenty and ten games, mm-hmm. and just everything he does, he like he 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 the man the kid does it all. He, there's just I don't think we really know his ceiling. That's the scary part. I just don't know how I, – I, I just can't see how good he can actually be. Like, I can't say, oh, he's going to peak at so-and-so. I have no idea. Exactly. And it was kind of like how Luca was the same way. A lot of people were saying, you know what? The potential is there. We don't know how far this can go. You're seeing it. It's been – this is, what, year four or five for Luca. Yeah. I, I, Scotty's going to be the same way in his first year. Look what he's doing already. I don't even yeah. know what year three or four is going to look like for him. He's going to be insanely good. Yep. So definitely the fact that he's Scottie shining Barnes. with like Van Fleet on the floor, he's shining with Siakam on the floor. Even when Trent goes nuts, he's there, you know, and, and he stepped up when he needed to, Um, even when it wasn't asked of him, he stepped up, man. So I agree, man. It's just, what he's and, doing is, is nuts. <laughs> and you have all the top players. You have Kevin Durant, LeBron James basically saying, this kid is freaking good. Like, this LeBron kid got is, frustrated. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> like, the top players in the NBA are saying, this kid's incredible. He's something else. Like, they don't, they don't say that to a lot of people, especially no. rookies. They're not saying that about Cade and, and Mobley. So, that kind of the proofs of the pudding right there. I mean, the mere fact he's not number one and we're better than both teams, it's like, it, it feels like they're, they're going off statistics. Like, there's they're hatred going off statistics. on Toronto, man. They're they, going off statistics. They keep hating on us, but don't worry, man. You cannot, as much as you try to hide it, you cannot stop our light. You know what I'm saying? We're a like he, foot true. He did just get uh Eastern Conference rookie. Of the month. Month. Yeah. Yeah. So they rookie of the they month, yeah. they acknowledge it, right? They're yeah. seeing it. It's just um when you look at statistics, it's different. But I think I agree with y'all. I think it's going to be Scotty Barnes. I think at the end, you're going to see like it just keeps rotating Mm -hmm. until the end of the season. And then for MVP, honestly, I'm, I am going to agree with what they have. I'm going to say Jokic. And the reason why I'm going to say Jokic is Jokic is literally playing without Murray. They had a lot of injuries this season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, I and believe the, Gordon was down for a bit. Gordon was down for a bit. I mean, Philly, Murray was Philly down. Think Philly what? had mental health injuries. That's true, <laughs> but that person wasn't ever on the court. That's the that's no, there's a that's huge the difference. difference. <laughs> um, but for me, I look at it as they would not be in the playoff if it wasn't for Jokic. True. Like he's he's pretty much done everything for that team. You know what I mean? Like triple doubles even if he's getting a double double it's usually with assists over rebounds like he's he's hooping out there you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. so i wouldn't i'm not i wouldn't be surprised if mb got got it but i think at this point right now i would give it to Jokic. but there's still a few more games that. in the season and it's i think it's neck and neck right like mm-hmm. head to head. like i don't think yep. i don't really think i it's think it's gonna Giannis be close speaks, yeah, I think Giannis being third is Giannis just being there because they needed a third person. Yeah. But it's really mm-hmm. just a top two that it's, it's between Embiid and Jokic. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts, facts, facts. Um, have you guys had a chance to watch uh winning time? Yeah, I've been watching it. I I've been watching started. it. Started. I, I haven't gotten a minute. Uh yeah, I'm caught up. Jeez. So I'm not gonna go so we're not gonna discuss it. I think that that's be one that we do at Appreciate the end of you. like when the season's <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah, but I will say it is a wild show. 
It is a wild <laughs> show. From the from the few minutes I did see, I I'm like, all right, this is not something I have in the background. I gotta pay attention. You to gotta pay attention. It, yeah. You gotta. It's it's wild in a good way. It's yeah. wild in a good way. That show is is crazy. And Magic has his own documentary coming out. <laughs> Battle yeah, of the so, Docs. So. <laughs> It's it's one thing. I'm just gonna say it's a wild show. So yeah. all yeah. right. I, I saw certain things in the first couple of seasons. I'm like, all right, that, oh. all right, all right, HBO or is it HBO? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Well, it was HBO. Just, I'm, just I'm wait till you get to yeah. just wait till you get to episode three. Episode yes. three to me was the one where yeah. I was like, okay, this suffice it to say, I'm so happy they made a drama about the that time in the Lakers. And oh yeah, I'm for so, sure. I'm so happy. For I'm sure. So happy. That was a that was a wild one. I'm not going to yeah. I'm not going to write right. about that. All right, sold. <laughs> um let's say congratulations to the Canadian soccer team. No, we should not. No, no, no. Fire upon that. Fire upon. That's not fair. We were playing in snow. Okay, you can't have Jamaica's played soccer. <laughs> but, yo, I'm sorry, but Jamaica, Jamaica it's... wasn't even Jamaica's been eliminated. So I mean, it was a it, it, yeah, don't say that with so much glee in your throat, man. What the hell? I'm not, I mean, I'm just you, stating your fact. voice. I'm just stating voice. a fact. As a, they've already been eliminated. As <laughs> to me, did you all as, even qualify? Okay. As a man that lived in Jamaica when the reggae boys qualified, mm. there was no bigger was feeling, ago. no bigger feeling than that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but. Was it jamming? That was a the song of the oh no the World they, Cup. There was just a whole bunch of different like yeah. when when you were down there. Yeah, man, it was like no. I meant the official song. I know it was jamming, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was like, when you're down there, it yeah. was like, you remember when Jamaica qualified in Cool Runnings, mm-hmm. and everybody was at the shops and stuff like that. That's kind of how it felt while people That's like any any of those small shops, everybody packed it up like it was yeah. crazy packed in there. And that was like a experience of a lifetime. I'm not going to lie to you. So, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, congratulations. Yes. Uh, congratulations. Congrats, Canadian yeah. Soccer team. Yeah. yeah. First, f- first qualifying since um, qualifying since 1986. It's been a long Jeez. time. It's been. Damn. A- yep. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, now that you've beaten out J- in Jamaica, make it count. So I'm saying make it count. Also, I uh, didn't back on the African side. Didn't Ghana just beat Nigeria? Uh yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're, they're they're always. I mean, Ghana's been qualifying for Battle a while Jones now. Race. Like they're they're a really solid team. Mm-hmm. It's yep. now the competition comes in. Who makes a better better music? That's where the oh. problem. That's where the problem really kicks in because they all have bangers <laughs> coming out of there. But who yeah. makes the better? Who makes the better yeah. one? That's the question. <laughs> um. This is okay. So this is one that I wanted to ask essay about because we discussed this a few episodes ago. I'm trying to remember which episode it was. I think it was the one with. Oh, it was the one with McFly. Mm -hmm. We discussed it. I was in an episode, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. You were supposed to be on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So we talked about Shensia. Oh, God. Yeah, yes, sir. And the issue with the like the lick song, oh, all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So her album came out uh not uh two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I still have to get to it. And I'm a little hesitant if I'm being honest. There are some <laughs> reggae producers that have come out and said that the sale doesn't justify the sale is considered a flop. Really, the amount of sales. Oh. Oh what's boy. the what's the number? From what I remember, I'm gonna double check this because I don't want to give off wrong numbers. But I seen her name I think, has that song in my head now. I think the last time I saw it was. So it says in the U.S. last week, eleven thousand two hundred total units Yee. from sales and streaming. I was gonna say if it's under twenty thousand, that's a flop for sure. Yikes! Damn, eleven thousand yeah. in sales. Yeah, that Oof. in this day and age, even with streams, yeah, that's that that is a flop. That's, that's really that's a flop. You ain't got to be a Jamaican producer to see that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's a flop. Damn. Unfortunately, because I, I since she is one of those artists that like I well, 
pre lick and yeah. and this 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 version of her you know i mean when she was on donda i i had high hopes you know but i also was very nervous that she was going to be americanized and kind of lose what makes chinsia that's, right? like, that's what seems like yeah. is happening now it, it does it does seem like it because like the big the best things about chinsia are those freestyles that she does right and it's like but then it feels like now she's kind of super watering down the kool-aid uh to fit this mold that they yeah. tell her to do and i, I think yeah. she needs to just break out of that and be her so i think use this to get your name on people's minds you know what i'm saying and then kind of detach from this now and kind of go on your path and say okay that didn't work i tried it let me shut it off and now let me bring it back back out you know like and and um i think partnering with megan was not a great move uh especially if the song sounds and has the same look as like WAP. Yeah. right so uh, and now she's being sued because apparently she took that wholeheartedly from uh, another song. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think, I, and also I think, I mean, just a side question because it's mm-hmm. not the question you asked me. Mm-hmm. I think the the Megan train is kind of slowing down and coming to a possible stop. Well, she has uh, a doc coming out. How? A doc of what? The last three years? What's it? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this during is, I'm, COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this is all something to kind of get her out of her record deal. Apparently what I'm hearing is she still owes two albums and she's trying to somehow skate around that. So she's really trying to get out this deal. But these guys are saying, you owe us some shit. You owe us some music. You're in, like, I, I think she's in the red still with, with her record label. Because mm-hmm. she nice? just, she hasn't been producing the numbers they need. So she's really trying to find ways to get out that deal. Now, is it that or is it other potential news as we I are don't want to go on to a week away that. from yeah. April. We are we are <laughs> we are close to close to that. I don't even want to discuss that part because that's because yeah. I think we're just gonna wait to see what happens. From <laughs> what that. happens? Yeah, I'll, I'll wait. To um, see what I'm just saying it's weird yeah. that you're having a documentary and you're not even like a you just stop being a sophomore. <laughs> like like yeah. I, that's that's come on. Like all the other greats out there who are actually killing it. Um, you know and. They don't have docs yet, but we're going to get a, a Megan the Stallion doc. Like, who asked for this? Like, isn't she? She just released her first official album. Why yeah. do you have a documentary coming out? Right? Like, I don't know. I also, I, we just want to put in comparison that so for Shinsia's album. Yeah. With all the, the big topic. names and everything that everyone put, put surrounded her around and all that stuff. Right. Lotto just actually put out her first album. Yes. And the projection is 22,000 for the first That's it? I I actually think that's a decent number for her because she mm. doesn't actually have the name value that everyone else has, right? Like yeah. this um, is she's on. The, I was shocked when I heard the features that she had on the album. Like that's almost a little curious. Like, but Lotto isn't a household name yet, right? But like, I, I heard I heard she's rapping, rapping on. This oh, album. she's rapping. I like, like the she's album. she going I off like, in this. I album. like the album and yeah. that track with. The standout track that everyone's going to be playing is the one with Lil Wayne and Childish Gambino. Yeah, sure. right. Yeah, but she that has some a banger. She has some tracks on there, and I, I think for her, one of the smartest thing I think that will help her numbers is she put out the Big Energy remix featuring yep. Mariah Carey. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right, mm-hmm. so she's starting to get those big names now too. But Shensia was more of a featured person on everybody's album. You know what I mean? Like a lot of you just heard freestyles or you would catch a track here and there. Like some people knew about her from before. Some people didn't. Um, two, two things. Uh, one for Lotto and then going to yeah. see ya. Um, for Lotto, my question is now because she released the big energy mm-hmm. uh, remix and it was Mariah Carey and um, was it somebody else? Khaled. So. Khaled, right? So my thing is, who is this person that she said was the reason the album's been delayed like the person that you know tried to slide into yeah. dms and be a sneaky links and it yeah I, I don't know like, that I wonder, person i wonder because I, I was under I, the impression once the big energy remix feature was released that we would know exactly who it was and now it's like i don't think it's Khaled, <laughs> right i mean is it like i don't somebody somebody brave enough to want to offer up sex for a feature that's super crazy i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't that's know nuts. that's just crazy and i mean 
I heard a rumor of somebody who tends to get it in any event or stadium. But um, my access my Shinsia uh, thing, I think it would have definitely benefited her because, yeah, you're right. She was mostly known as features on other people's tracks. If she kind of went the Rihanna route, right, where it's like instead of trying to become American, you know, so much American, um, like stay true to who you are and stay mm-hmm. true to what puts you in those rooms. Right. I, I think uh, that's one of the reasons why Rihanna is such a like exploded. Right. Because she came up with that song that was played so often that started annoying people uh, upon the replay. Right. And and, and it's like that i think she should have came up with that instead of a lick like a a, a, a jamaican american infused type sound instead of some wop reject right like, she had I, better I, she had way better songs on the album than than lick that she oh absolutely like, absolutely easily, easily came out that had like the hip-hop the hip-hop dance hall mixer yeah, she, it, she right? definitely should have came up with a song that all the ages could like like sing and dance to she should have yeah. came up with that yeah well, we wish them. We wish Shensia absolutely di- direction and where she's going because yeah. she's a talented artist. She's a very oh, yeah. talented very artist, and when talented. you when you hear her sing, just in her voice, it's just she's tell you very thing. talented. I'll tell you one thing: when she does find that 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 rhythm, oof. oh boy, oh yeah, yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's a wrap. It's mm-hmm. a wrap. Uh, so last thing I'm just going to ask you guys are what shows are you guys watching right now? Uh, for me, whenever I actually have time, uh, severance severance. Is that the one with Adam Scott? Yes. Yes. And the one directed by Ben Stiller. Uh, it is a very good high concept sci-fi that doesn't go over the top. Um, it's a great mystery. Uh, I don't want to give away or say mm-hmm. too much, but essentially the premise is that they found a way to kind of separate your work life and your personal life. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Except to, I highly recommend check out severance on Apple TV. Okay. What about you fanfare? Yeah. I, st- I was watching some of that show. That show was it's really good, but, um, I'm watching, um, obviously snowfall. I don't, I don't know who's so keeping behind. up with it. I don't know who's getting, but this season is it, it's 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 a wild one to say the least. There's a lot of moving parts in this season, but okay. yeah, Snowfall. And I started last week um, the first episode of that Halo show. Mm, I saw it. Yeah, they, yeah, it, they, it was on Paramount Plus. Yeah. So I saw it. I mean, it's very ambitious. It's gonna. It seems like it's a very ambitious show, but it's only one episode in, so we'll see how it goes. And to tomorrow, it. tomorrow I start Moon Knight. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh, one yeah, more I want to add to the week. list. And that is, uh, yeah. um, that Moon Knight. Uh, I'm excited for that. Uh, have you guys checked out the Doctor Strange? Uh, I think it's the third trailer. No, I I'm, not, I'm not watching it. Yeah, I, I, I felt the same trailers. way. My, my, my it. boy sent it to me, and the thumbnail alone said, Nope. I'm not. I'm not watching this. it because I'm already it, pissed it, off. You sent me it with that thumbnail. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I, I'm sure this trailer is going to give us so much more things. Wait, no, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be surprised. I'm not watching no more trailers. Okay, God, I wasn't the only one. And a uh, servant on Apple TV again. Uh, servant is the M Night Shyamalan uh, series. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're a fan of uh, Sixth Sense. Uh, you will definitely enjoy this one. It's starring. I, I um, fell off. I fell off so bad. Did? I'm only like five episodes into season one. I fell. I off. hung in there. I hung in there. Um, it was so but, slow. It's and it's one of those shows I kind of have when I'm washing dishes uh, or doing like work that I can that I can split my attention. Yeah. Um, but the third season's kind of like really picked things up. Uh, but yeah, it is kind of a slow burn. Fair warning. Uh, but if you are a fan of Sixth Sense and Shyamalan's actual good works, uh, you know, current work notwithstanding, but uh, I definitely recommend that as well. All right, I'm done. <laughs> okay okay for me Bel Air uh Bel Air I I wasn't a big fan of the first episode but then it was also because I was looking at it as I was around to yeah watch the original yeah but when you get past that and you look at the second episode and then you really you really see that they kind of take they changed the elements characters. 
and changed the elements, kept the names, yeah. but changed the elements, yeah. which which mm-hmm. made it really good t- for me. Um, and Jeffrey's a G. So Absolutely. In, in this in this series, Jeffrey is such a G. It's crazy. Um, so that also, like I said, winning time, because win- winning time is just a wild show right now. And <laughs> Abbott's Elementary. Abbott's yeah, that show's funny. That show's funny. Yeah. Yep. So that show was hilarious. It's been picked up for season two already. It's already been oh, renewed. I had no doubt. I had no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the three that, yeah, I Anytime that, I see that, 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 I'm watching that shows that show's gonna end up being um like as popular as like community. It's gonna be like a show like that where it's like yeah. it's just every episode is gonna I be tell everyone like it's black humor. office. Yeah, yeah. basically it's because it it's kind of shot the same way, everything just yeah. the elements is different about it being in a school rather than an office. But mm-hmm. no, they're kill they're killing that role. They're mm-hmm. killing that show. Uh, uh, I also recommend that CW's uh power book for the force uh if you've watched a cw show like <laughs> like arrow or the flash uh you'll understand what Yo, i'm talking about i just don't Yo, i don't know why y'all are dissing tommy bro this show is actually pretty good i it like was. so i like the I like show the because show. power is power that's yeah. what it, that's what it is like this power is, this is, 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 is i'm not comparing this to power this is no. tommy like this is his, his story i well, like come it. on that that's was it six episodes not this week not this Sunday, but a Sunday before. Come on, man. When they're doing the science, that kind of that kind of felt like they were in like no, Oliver I'm, Queen's I'm lair, like, man. It felt like they were in labs, bro. Because I, I know the show's going somewhere. I like it. It's okay. going somewhere. Just me, I guess it's just I'm, me. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I like the show, but I also know that power is gonna power. So like right. you get you can't watch any of these power shows and just be like, oh, it's this whole show is gonna make sense. Like no. you just know power is gonna power, and then you're gonna be yeah. like, "What is happening here? Why is this?" But I'm, I'm actually giving this more of a chance because the fact that they're in a new city, they have to mm-hmm. do all the character development from yep. start. From so scratch, like, yeah. compared to like, uh, Ghost, where mm-hmm. it's pretty much continuation of characters, mm-hmm. and even Raising Kanan, where you already knew who Kanan was. This is just his prologue right so like mm-hmm. it's i'll give it a little more chance but if they over if they overpower power i'm too gonna tell you it may it may, ha- it may that's mm-hmm. when i may have to say no right <laughs> if they have too many bullet sandwiches yeah like if 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 the serb girl comes back all of a sudden like i'm gonna be like yo this is this is this is power uh but <laughs> we've reached the part of the podcast where that's we get, when they truly become a CW oh that's show. when they become a cw show for sure uh, we reached the part of the podcast where we get to promote our social medias, anything else that we might be working on. So, Essa, you want to kick us off? Yes, sir. All right. So, my personal IG is at Pro Chatterbox, and I have a podcast with none other than Joseph, aka Baritone Levy. Yonkers. Yes, sir. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has not been confirmed, but Joe, come on the show. His, Yonkers, his, Joe. His, his Yonkers Joe. Yonkers <laughs> Joe. True. Oh, I thought according to Keto, he's Harlem now, right? No, nah, uh, no, Keto's Harlem. <laughs> Joe is Yonkers. Yo, we all drafted him in the different <laughs> boroughs. Like, but anyways, yes, I have I have a podcast with Joseph, aka shout out Yonkers, shout out Brooklyn, shout out whoever he's representing at the time. <laughs> um, talks with the chatterbox. We have our IG at Chatter Talks. Uh, we also have our website, www.chattertalks.tv. And season three is on the way. Uh, by this episode, we've kind of done an interesting thing. Don't want to give out too many details, uh, but it is a bit of an exclusive thing. So if you want to know more information, definitely follow us at Chatter Talks or www.chattertalks.tv. That's what's up. Fair, fair. Yeah, you can follow me on IG, Chaz underscore Tenenbaum. Dope. Uh, first thing I want to say is you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Senator. Uh, don't forget to check out the not so soft podcast comes out every Monday. Now with myself, Nina Rockwell, Kino, the great, don't forget to check out talks with the chatterbox when they release it. Don't worry. It's going to be, it's going to be worth the wait. Uh, we told, we told you on the not so soft pod, they have an NFT on the wait time between seasons. So no one else can do that. Hey, listen, we address that. Too. <laughs> oh. uh, I do want to give a special shout out to uh, Mindfully Created. They do the beads that I wear, but they also did this 
this chain oh, here. That's dope. Um, so if you want to go check them out, look them up on Instagram at mindfully underscore created. Uh, don't forget to like, rate, subscribe, and share the chat room podcast. Don't forget to follow our Instagram page at the dot chat room pod. Don't forget to follow our TikTok at chat room podcast. Yeah. And we're just going to sure. keep, we're just going to keep an episode season finale coming soon, but we also have some things in the works to keep you in touch with the basketball season and our commentary as we go on. But a couple more episodes, then we'll call it the season finale. So just look out for that. And yeah, gentlemen, I think for us not really knowing what we were going to come in here to talk about, I think we, Mm -hmm. we did it. We all Raptor squad, yo, that's how, that's how we do. (laughs) Team Raps. Yes, Yes, sir. Raptors takeover. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for sure and this has been the chat room podcast your favorite baller's favorite podcast and we are out peace, peace.